Good morning. My name is Esteban Pozo. I am very pleased to present our work related to collaborative robotic environment for educational training in Industry 5.0 using an open lab approach. I'm speaking on behalf of Mr. Nikon Shumar Patel and Professor Franz Schiele from Hochschule Schmalkalden. The objective of our work is to provide a safe collaborative robotic environment where open lab experiments related to control engineering, artificial intelligence, robotic vision, haptics, and sensor engineering can take place. We want to describe this as a free access open lab environment for collaborative robotics. We will use haptics and also vision systems. On the picture on the left, you can see a picture of an open lab. We can see the team and the, the the robots that we have at this moment. Uh, we have also been in contact with industrial partners such as Menard Lab in Erfurt and BNR Automation about the state of the art. As you probably know, there are traditional industrial robots that have been used for decades in production lines. Sometimes these robots are always in cages. You need uh, basically a uh, safe environment in order to produce and manufacture products. Well, another paradigm is the collaborative robot uh, industry. So the idea is to have workers making their tasks uh, on a very close contact with the robots in order to boost production. So related to the trends, the research trend about cobots. It has accounted for over 22% in the automotive industry and over 17% in the electronics industry. About this trend, it's also remarkable to notice that the vision prevalent sensor have been used in human robot collaboration due to flexibility and affordability. As you can see, it, there is a trend on the right between robot and the years and it has been increasing for cobots. About the market trend, it has been reported by Matheson that the collaborative robot market is estimated to grow from 710 million in 2018 to 12 to over 12 billion US dollars by 2025. Also for small and medium enterprises, uh, which represent almost 70% of the global number of manufacturers, they will also adopt cobots because they are less expensive. As you can see on the right, there's also an increase in productivity. So this is about the research. So cobots related to productivity and also safety research. This is the concept that we are using right now. So from left to right, you can see how the robot and the cameras, also the sensors interact with the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. And you can see how the Arduino Mega and the capacitive sensor, time of flight and ultrasonic sensor integrate with the robot skin. About the overall concept of haptics, we are trying to emulate the sense of the skin, of the human skin. So when our skin is uh, subjected to pressure, we can sense that pressure. The same happens with the sensors, in this case, the proximity sensors. They work on the principle of sensing the change in capacitance of a plate. Any conductive surface can be utilized as a sensing element, as you can see with this intelligent uh, robot skin. And a textile woven with woven metal strands is utilized in this application, together with the capacitive proximity sensor. About the communication, textile-based capacitive proximity sensors are used and they are adjustable to sensitivity up to 30 centimeters in range. The ultrasonic sensor, the distance is measured up to four meters and it's susceptible to humidity and dirt. 
and the time of flight sensor is more responsible and accurate, about 1.8 meter range, I to see serial communication. These are pictures of the Arduino Mega and also the BNR PLC. The Modbus TCP IP communication standard Ethernet protocol and real time communication 10 to 100 megabytes half foot duplex for our case. About the initial testing, you can see the current state, the synchronization up to 100 milliseconds of sensor inputs and robot speed control has been achieved. In total, six ultrasonic, six time of flight, and four capacity proximity sensors to sense the surroundings. Collective response of multiple sensor forms, robust system. The limitations and challenges. The significant difference in scan cycles of PLC and Arduino. So this is a challenge in order to synchronize both. The ultrasonic sensor limits the cycle speed of Arduino and the proximity sensor getting stuck at high sensitivity adjustments limiting the range of sensor. As you can see, the sensor reading the distance varies along time in seconds. Also the robot speed has a relation to this change. In this case, means it will be stopped because the speed will be marked as zero. About the concept related to vision systems, you can see that our task is to enable a human-robot cooperative environment by using hand detection and object tracking. The concepts will be the protective separation distance. As you can see, it's defined by the equation shown and defined by ISO standard 15066. We will also use function blocks to override the normal movement of the block of the robot and also hand detection and object tracking algorithms using Python and OpenCV. We will moreover use a longer short term memory for action detection. We will use the OpenCV library in order to train a neural network and define a sequence of movements that will be carried out by the operator in order to uh, stop or move the robot. You can see our setup we have two cameras, one camera looking to the, the working area and one front camera. We will also use Jetson Lano and the aforementioned Beginner PLC. The hand detection concept, as you can see, we can translate the video image into a pixel image. So we can work on every frame and get coordinates from each pixel. Therefore, we can build uh, distance, a safe separation distance, and we will use it using the hand detection, the paper provided by Simon from um, Carnegie Mellon University, and which is the base of OpenCV, this uh, tracking library. We will also use a function block, and you, we will use it in order to override the robot movement. About the tracking concept, we need to track the robot in order to make the robot be aware of itself. So the idea is to track the robot in real time. Therefore, we place a tracker and since the hand is already being recognized, we can build a distance between the tracker and the hand. Here we can see how the movement stops when the robot and the hands are too close. And on the screen on the right, you can see the speed override. The speed goes from 100, the normal movement, to zero. So it means that the robot is stopped, that the cameras notice that our hands are in the environment, and also that the robot is aware of itself. It knows its position on the field of view, thanks to the tracker. about the long short term memory concept for action detection. We are going to use this algorithm because it's uh, appropriate for sequential data. We will take a video of the actions in order to train our neural network and then we will deploy it and use it to translate human actions into 
actions that should be carried out by the road. So on the right, you can see a little bit of the steps. We collected the data, we pre-processed the data, we'll build a model and deploy it. You can see how the architecture is defined and how the model was trained and also some experiments that we did by changing the architecture in order to get the best results. These are the list of commands. So the robot will stop, the robot will come to a position or go and carry out the normal set of tests. In this case, if we make this intuitive stop sign, then the robot will stop. If we do this second sign, then it will come to us and go will mean to continue with the tasks. So these are the results. So you can see we can move our hands in a very intuitive way, pointing to the camera and our gestures and actions will recognize on real time. This is what we have attained in an open lab. Conclusions. So a safe separation distance can be achieved between the robot and the human operator by means of vision systems even under a controlled laboratory environment. The pose of the human operator and the hand signs can be interpreted as commands that can be sent to the robot. The robot movement can be stopped by means of capacitive and ultrasonic sensors when obstacles are encountered. Model accuracy and overfitting are one of our challenges. Also data collecting, angle of video, illumination, latency, replacing ultrasonic sensors with time of flight sensors to reduce the cycle time of Arduino, optimizing the sensor breakout board size to accommodate in the textile elements instead of plastic supports. About the further research. Robotics, hardware architectures, other visual systems, and deep learning architectures. Upgrading the system with embedded systems instead of Arduino or using a synchronous sensor setup to achieve a higher sense sync frequency. This work has been done in the open lab of Hochschule Schmalkalden. The advantage of using an open lab concept was that the open lab allowed us to explore new features, use the hardware and also the software, and moreover, interact with our colleagues. Even though the pandemic had posed some restrictions, some of our colleagues were also able to work from abroad. That means using um, online methods. We also have a digital twin for a robot that allows us to simulate the robot movement and the robot tasks even if we are not in the lab. That's the advantage of an open lab concept. Thanks for your attention. If you have further questions, please contact Professor Frank Schrödel with his email and also follow us on our Mission Mint channels on YouTube and also Instagram. Thanks for your attention.